Hey guys, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'm working on a request for Vivian and her friends, which is uh, Cozy Moments, which is the Chow Bella collection. So if you would like me to work on something specific for you, shop around in Scrap and Create, pick a collection and let Julie know and I'll do my best to uh, create an album for you. So at the moment we're going to work on the cover for this. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is a fairly monochromatic collection which is very beautiful um, but I do think uh, because it's monochromatic it's really important to have striking borders on it uh, since there's not a lot of um, uh, contrasting colors in the collection. They all kind of blend together. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here on the co cover. I'm matting this with white and then I'm going to lay these two pieces down. And before I do that, I'm going to show you that uh, these pieces were trimmed off this album or this, this 12 by 12. So this is what was left over from the 12 by 12. And I think it went some, uh, is that right? You know that I say that, I'm not completely sure, but I think it is trimmed off from this piece. Now this came from a 12 by 12, which had this beautiful image, and then it had a really pretty bunny down here, which I fussy cut, and we're gonna use as well. Here it is. And I think it was down, no, actually it was over here. And then there's this little bunny down here. So I trimmed this down to seven and a half by seven and a half and then matted it in white. And then what was left over, I just created a diagonal cut and flipped it over. Yes, it's all from the same paper. I had to turn that over to make sure. So now what I'm gonna do on the cover is I'm gonna use these two as corners, and like I said, it's just a diagonal cut. So this is four and a half by seven and a half, four and a half by seven and a half. Originally I trimmed this to uh, seven and a half by seven and a half, and then I changed it to seven by seven. Uh, just because I wanted more of the gray uh, to mat around it. So this is what I'm planning and I need. So I love this box. It's a, it's a wonderful box from Apple and it's what my watch came in. It weighs a ton. <laughs> it's empty right now. Um, my watch is not in here. But um, when I place it inside my book, it's perfect to hold the cover up while I decorate it. So at the moment I'm trying to decide if I want to do this or this. And I like both as usual. <clears throat> and I've got some other elements that I'm going to add. I am definitely going to use what is the graphic 45 clock die in this. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it on the cover, but I'm definitely going to use it in the album. And then these are some cut aparts that I want to use on the cover. And if you have a snowflake, and here's the graphic 45 uh, filigree clock die. If you have some, if you have a die that is a snowflake, by all means, I think you should use it. I have one just to give you kind of an example. Uh, because it's a winter collection, I think there's a lot of places where you can place these um, snowflakes. Um, I That's just out of my stash. I don't even have the name of it. It came with um, my die cut machine. Uh, but if you have some, go ahead and take those out. Make several. I think they'll come in handy. This was fussy cut from the edge of the paper. I want to use this because I want to introduce some more brown. This was fussy cut from the same page, and I've popped it up with some foam. And that's currently what I'm planning. So like I said, at the moment, I'm trying to decide if I want my corners uh, 
on top and bottom or left and right. <coughs> That's a tough decision. I think I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go ahead and put my corners down and then we'll come back and start to lay in some of the other elements. I'm using mahogany ink on the edges. If you have a dark gray, that would be ideal, or even a dark blue. But of course, brown always works. There's brown in this collection, so it, it works for sure. So this is the cover and it is build one. I don't always build in sequence, but it turned out using Chow Bella and Stamperia, it's, it's actually okay to build in sequence. I find uh, Graphic 45 is more of a challenge um, or it's easier to distribute the patterns if I build out of sequence. So I spread the patterns and cut through them in page sequence. I think that's good. And hopefully that makes sense. So this is again the cover and it is the first build. <clears throat> and this is from the 12 by 12. So make sure you set that aside. Seven by seven, and then I added white cardstock behind it to create the contrast that you see. I love this clock die. I'm not sure what I'm doing with it yet. <clears throat> this is going to go here. This is a straight edge, so it was actually fussy cut right off the edge of a sheet. So I'm going to tuck it slightly under this tag, and then this will go here. So these elements I'm sure of. I'm going to set these aside for the moment. <clears throat> So I like to um, bend the elements to create some dimension. <clears throat> And I would punch a hole in that and add some twine or something to make it interesting, but I can't find my punch. So you guys should do that. Uh, 
I might figure out something else to do right on the top, like add um, a round element or something like that. <clears throat> so as you can see, I've created a lot of bends um, to create that dimension. Now, if you're worried about <clears throat> it holding its shape, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue parts of this down and parts of it are going to remain elevated. <clears throat> but if you're concerned that it's not going to hold its shape, put some cardstock behind it, just straight behind it. It doesn't have to be exactly in the same shape to make it more rigid. And then it will hold its shape. <clears throat> And all these things, all, all the bending just makes it more interesting and um, makes it seem more like it's been used. It's not new, um, which a lot of times that's kind of what we're trying to make happen is to make it look more antiqued, so to speak. So this is um, a low point. This will be a low point. This will be, these two are going to remain up. I'm going to glue that down and that down. So that's kind of where the creases are, are going to be the down parts. The valleys will be um, where I don't place glue. So I'm also going to add a little glue like that. Okay, so you can see I should move slower, kind of what I'm doing here. <clears throat> And I don't want to flatten it. I just want the areas that I've added glue to grab. Right. So these are still curled up. You can see that it's kind of wavy. There you go. But again, if you're worried about it being stiff enough, um, just put some cardstock behind it before you do all the bending. <clears throat> go. Now when it's curled like this and you worry about it catching, you just put a line of glue and then just tip it like that and hold it. And it'll seal in place. And then you don't have to worry about it snagging on anything. It takes a moment, but it's worth the wait. <clears throat> so this is uh, eight and a half by eight and a half by two and a half. It's going to have four pocket pages. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of flaps in this album. What I am going to do... Um, is add uh, a lot of embellishments like this in all the photo spots. Instead of having lots of flips and flaps, I'm just gonna make sure there's tons of um, embellishments on each one of the pages. So it may have some flips and flaps. That's not wanting to come up, sorry. <clears throat> but not like some of my uh, more, I, the word technical comes to mind, but complicated, I guess, albums. Um, in this case, it's going to be more about the embellishments and less about uh, the mechanisms. Hopefully that all makes sense in the end. <clears throat> so this was just fussy cut off the bottom of this page. So, so far, all I've cut into is 112 by 12. Oops. This is really old foam tape, so it's not wanting to let go. <laughs> and I just cleaned my craft room and found some old adhesives and foam tape, which is not what I normally prefer. I like chipboard, but I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to use it up. Uh, so I put it in my drawer 
it's just to my left now and I'm going to do everything I can to use it all up. And I just did like an accordion fold on this back and forth and then I placed my foam tape on the edges the valleys so that it would go down and uh, and left a, a mountain in between so there we go <clears throat> so let me lift this up and show you what we've done so far so you can see the dimensions <clears throat> so far <clears throat> Now we have this guy, he's stinking cute, isn't he? And I definitely want him to float off the main border. And then I have this that I'm trying to figure out if I want to use on the cover or not. And I might not. Um, there's still room for like filigree corners on either side. I haven't decided. So the other die that I'm using from Graphic 45 is a frame die. <clears throat> And I'm also using some of the um, dies that create this. And I can't remember if it's from the large tag or not. But it's a graphic 45. This is a graphic 45 frame. That's half of it. And here's the other half. So one of the things I was thinking about was putting these on the corner instead of filigree. I haven't decided yet. And then I have these, we're not going to use that, but I have these elements that uh, make, they make it kind of interesting if you tuck them here and there and they're overlaying both the matted piece uh, and then travel onto the gray. I think it makes, uh, makes it very interesting. So that's something I'm thinking about doing. I'm not caring for that. Maybe that's just too much white, so I'm going to trim it down real quick. <clears throat> and once I get the look, if I decide it's right, um, you guys won't need to trim it. You'll just glue it to this matted uh, element before you lay it down, and that'll give you enough uh, space to add your glue. There you go. But right now I'm just looking at the aesthetics, so... From a construction perspective, if it looks right, you're going to want to add that before you glue this down. Mm, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm just trimming the other piece down. I'm not sure I'm in frame. I know I am now. Just to get a, a good look at it. Do we like that? Mm -hmm. We don't know. I don't think I like it. I think it's too much. Too much. I like this because it's more delicate um, than, say for example, this. This looks kind of bold, and this filigree looks very delicate, but I don't think round works on the cover. So I'm going to go ahead and work with these elements uh, that I die cut that are foliage. I like that, and I like this guy right here. So we're going to go ahead and add this Bonnie. I'm going to glue the tips of his ears down, his bum, and his middle part, neck, ears, bum, and let's see.
Okay. <clears throat> Now, I really like the look of these, but they are quite delicate. So um, if you decide to use them, just be conscious that, you know, they are quite delicate and there's some chance that, you know, that they um, won't hold up to a lot of handling. I like to layer. I think it just adds, uh, the dimension adds a lot of richness um, to a project. So layering, especially with little elements like this, I think make it more interesting. all the elements I have. Okay, so I think oh, I have one more element. Oh, actually, I have a couple more. 
<clears throat> I wasn't sure how many of these I die cut. Um, we still have this. I like this. Um, I think I'm going to put it right there. So it's going to go right here on the edge and then bleed over into the black, which I think is striking. Right? And then I still have this element. Mm. Okay, there we go. I think that's gonna, all I'm going to do here on the cover. I might add some Winkostella, but that's all the embellishing I'm going to do on the cover. I like this. I think it turned out great. I think this looks lovely down here. Um, and I like that it's fluffy. Yep. The dimension looks great. <clears throat> that is our cover for Cozy Moments. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I do want to add, I think, some Winka Stella. I'm not sure where. I'm going to give it a minute and uh, check it out. And then if I decide to do that, I will point that out um, before I finish this video. Be back soon. Hey, everyone. It's Daphne. I finished up on the cover. I'm going to share with you kind of what I did here. Um, oops. I bent my, my, my uh, foliage there. Um, I went ahead and added Winka Stella to several of the elements on the cover just to kind of make it a little bit more dimensional. And then I went ahead and um, used this pattern for the spine in the back. And this is from the 12 by 12. Um, uh, I think it's the patterns pack. Um, I used one of each, the scrapbook pad and the um, pattern pack. So yeah, so again, the background of this is what was left after I trimmed this out and then this came from a 12 by 12. So that's it for the cover, we're all wrapped up. And again, this element here is matted to seven by seven. Okay, I'll be back soon with, oh, let me double check that. I said that and now I'm thinking it was seven and a half, but let's go ahead and double check. Yep, it's seven by seven. Um, I think I went back and forth on that measurement a few times before I finally decided because I wanted a, a re rather large mat here. So that's it for the cover. Um, when I come back, we'll start working on page one. So this is the cover and it is build one. And that's also indicated in the title of the video. See you guys soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are going to wrap up uh, the cover video set of videos um, right now. We're going to do the inside liners left and right and so I'm going to put two pockets uh, one on each side this this is from the 12 by 12 pack and this is also from a 12 by 12 pack so here we go I'm going to set here and set here okay so the pocket is six and five eighths six and five eighths by nine and three eighths, six and five eighths by nine and three eighths. It's going to go like so, and we're going to have a flap on the pocket up here on the top. So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to turn turn this sideways so I can. See my edges. You want to make sure you're clear of the spine area. Okay, there's the pocket, and then here's our flap. The flap is three and seven eighths by eight and three eighths. You're going to score a half inch on the three and seven eighth inch side, and I forgot to mention you're going to do a half inch on three sides. To form your pocket. Okay, we're going to use a magnet to hold this in place. I'm going to use two magnets here.
Well, hello, Norma. Hi, hey, sweetie. We're going to repeat that process over here. So the closed end of the pocket is going to go toward the spine. The flap is going to go toward the open edge of the book. <clears throat> And now we'll do a flap. Okay, we'll add a couple of magnets. You can see my tape shifted, so I'm going to trim that off uh, so it's not exposed when I lay my paper down.
There we go. Pretty enough. Okay, so let's get started with the decorating. So again, this came from the 12 by 12, and I just split it in half. Half is going to go here, and half is going to go here. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, do I like that? So the advantage of putting it on this side is I get more of the lantern exposed. So I think I'm going to do that. So this is going to go right here. And I need to trim it a little bit. Oh, I forgot to ink it. Hmm. I'm about due for a new pad. It's not cute. What should I do, you guys? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna put the uh, the bunnies up. They're so stinking cute. That's definitely gonna go down. This is from the 12 by 12 uh, patterns. And I got one trimmed and not the other. Okay. Let me measure it real quick. <clears throat> so we need five and five eighths. Needs to be five and five eighths. I wonder if I want to use that. Okay, I'm gonna look through my stash. I'll be right back. Okay, I picked my uh, two papers for the inside here. Um, so this is the same as the pattern here. So it was what's left over from the 12 by 12. It's going to line the pocket. And then the back of the flap is going to be this wood pattern. So, yeah. And then while I was away, I finished this side. So they are um, it's exactly the same. The only difference is this piece. And this all came from one 12 by 12. This is just one, one side, and that's the flip side. 
This will go on our flap. I also inked these while I was away. Okay, so that's the inside liner. This is the front cover, this is the back cover, and as you can see, they match. So left and right. Okay, now we're gonna set this aside and get focused on the pages inside the book. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> 